Good evening, good evening. So here we are again tonight, and we have some awesome guests live from New Zealand right now. We have an awesome artist by the name of L.A. Thompson, who's going to talk to you about her involvement in a uh, national talent quest that got endorsed by Universal Music, and also all the other you know ongoings, maybe undergoings, uh, what it, it takes to be an in international, or maybe not international, well, she's international now, artist. And so if you're an original artist, you need to pay attention and learn from this lady. So here we go. How you going? L.A. Thompson, Hi, how are you? So I'm, I'll just I'm zoom great. in. Thank you. <laughs> I'll, I'll just zoom in. So is it pretty cold in New Zealand before I zoom in? How cold well, is I it do there? Have, I do have the heater on. All right, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> so here we go. It's not, I'll, it's not freezing. I'll tell you what, it's pretty cold here right now. It should be sunny here. Okay, so if you want to tell us what you do and where you do it. Well, um, the list is reasonably long. Um, <laughs> so I'll try, <laughs> I'll try and keep it short. I started out um, performing myself, you know, for many years, songwriter, recording artist, a little bit late bloomer when it came to um, doing music videos, things like that. And in my infinite yep. wisdom, decided to not just do a Coromandel Music Month hit disc, which um, I suppose I'm allowed to show you. This is yes, the first compilation, first compilation for radio. I got stubborn. I wanted to show New Zealanders and Australasia and the world that you can make it in your own country, you know, that you don't have to always travel out to get a bigger name, which is us little Kiwis, we do. So I, I sort of got stubborn and thought, okay, Let's do something with indie artists for New Zealand. So I started with Coromandel Music Month. Hit this 19 tracks of local artists. Got 10 interviews on MediaWorks, which is our big FM stations in New Zealand. Yep. And local paper did lots of interviews um, for the local artists. So that was, that was a success. That was lots of fun. And then the following year, did Volume 2. Um, another bunch of really cool local artists. And then the third year... And, of course, I decided to go nationwide. So I went yeah. nationwide with local musicians' music, started my own company, which is uh, not-for-profit. So this one had about, I think there's two, four, six, eight, I don't know, maybe about 16 tracks on this one. Yeah, wow. The fourth album went digital only to Spotify. Um, iTunes wouldn't, <laughs> I didn't realise that iTunes will not, and here's a little, little trick um, to remember for anybody designing album covers iTunes do not accept an, a uh, vinyl, you know, the shape of a vinyl record. Yeah, right. So I, I designed this, um, or I had designed this really cool vinyl in purple, <laughs> yep. and uh, iTunes wouldn't upload it. So uh. I, didn't find that, I didn't find that out till this year. So, I mean, that's crikey, a year and a half after <laughs> uploading. So oh, nobody okay. told me. My digital distributor didn't tell me that, Oh, we're really sorry, Shirley. We didn't upload to iTunes for you because we've been told that you yeah, can't right. use an image of a vinyl. So anyway, there's a little lesson learned. Yep. Um, and also, I've got I'm, I'm leaving this particular digital uploader because they should have informed us. Fair so enough. So there's fair that enough. one. It wasn't just that. It's a few reasons, but there's good ones. There's not so good ones. Um, I'm not. So you sure work who. with lots of you've worked with lots of different artists. Supporting them with their original music. Yeah, it's been um, it's been fun. It's been a learning curve, and it's been um, I can't say it hasn't been stressful at times um, <laughs> right. because us, you know what we're like. Us artists can um, be a bit of a minefield of emotion, so you have to deal with each person on their own merits. Um, right. There is no one foot does not one shoe does not fit everybody, and that's where I do, I must admit I do disagree with a lot of the platforms and templates of promotions that say that it does because it doesn't we're all quite individual in our needs and right. how we see the world and how we write and what we want to achieve my success could be completely different from the next person you know right, right. um so the journey is going to be quite unique and so, yeah. with the um what, what you were just talking to me about before with getting universal involved mm. in your nationwide um, talent quest. Was it, talent quest. It was, yeah, it was an actual talent quest, which I'm not always for, but this one was a fun one. Yeah, right. Okay. So maybe any highlights on that? Maybe one or two highlights. That um... yeah, totally. Um, the spon the sponsors that came on board absolutely blew me away. 
um, Media Works New Zealand came on board with not just TV coverage of the finale, but also um, sponsored thousands of dollars worth of um, uh, advertising. Deb Stanaway was the voiceover, and she worked for More FM in Auckland Central, which is one of the main media works. There's only 22 main stations in New Zealand, I think. And mm. um, my backing track that my producer did with me for one of my songs, we manipulated it to be quite dancey for back in the day. And, yeah, right, um, okay. For two, and and um, so I, I got to do a jingle for the first time, which was a highlight. So there were lots of highlights. I met Tina Cross came in, sang for me, was one of the judges. The guys came up from Wellington, from one of the nightclubs and was a judge. Um, some of the highlights were um, the performers themselves. I sourced, honestly, I couldn't even tell you how often I went out sourcing talent yeah, and wow. um, was, am was amazed. And um, so, yeah, we, we had a little bar called Kaluzzi on K Road where we did the um, heats semi-finals yep. we were sponsored little packages we made up every single contestant got a little package with little bits and pieces and a t-shirt and oh, actually, actually what was quite funny was a sex shop who um i used someone oh, who wow. was managing actually i know <laughs> but there was nothing like that sort of sent out as gifts or anything like that oh, right. <laughs> we keep it That's clean family know. keeping it family <laughs> I mean, I probably oh, no. should have. It would have been fun, you know. Oh, right. There we, we go. We, we, we didn't. We didn't. We decided that wouldn't have been a good look. We just let them put their logo at the bottom, dub, 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 dot, the den at the bottom. Okay. And um, they paid for thousands of dollars worth of T-shirts so we could give them away to all the contestants. There you um, go. Sell a couple. Yeah, yeah. So it cost me an arm and a leg to put on. <laughs> yeah, right. But I still I still have all my limbs. So it, it had a long-term... For me, it had a long-term effect as in, oh, if I could do this pretty much on my own, what else yep. can I do? And um, I didn't do this event again. I was told maybe I should have. But I said, you know, sometimes you try something that could be successful or not quite su success successful, but a lot comes out of that that shows you where, what direction you want to take next. And right. it made yeah, me and... real yeah. No, no, you go. You made you realise that I needed to pursue my own songwriting, my own performance, lift my game, you know, because I've right. always aspired to keep lifting. I was very fortunate when I was younger um, to be involved in uh, the production and mm. recording of a, um, a vinyl when I was in my teens. I was oh, about, wow. I don't know, about 12, Glenford Intermediate yeah. School. Right, when, so that sort of set yeah, the scene. That was, yep, and happening was huge in New Zealand. That was the TV show where we all idolised Ray Wolf and Ray Columbus and the chicks. And I wanted to be them. <laughs> oh, right. So there was, it's been ongoing. And plus being an athlete for New Zealand, I think, installed a um, competitive streak you, in me, I guess. You were an athlete? I was. <laughs> oh, right. What, yeah. what did you do? What, did you I actually compete for? I represented, for... yeah, represented New Zealand when I was, um, wow. I think, the about country. 15. Yeah, it was it was yeah. a pretty big highlight for me to have what, been involved. What sport? In that. What um, athletics? I I couldn't I could run faster after running four lengths, so I was middle distance. I guess I wanted to be the next Johnny Walker, the female version of Johnny Walker. So I competed with the guys. Um, I think I saw Johnny Walker at the shop the other day. There was a little bottle. Really? Yeah, Johnny Walker. Oh, yeah. No, the Scotch. No. <laughs> yeah, that's about where that's about where I ended up later. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny, she'll be good. Yeah, yeah. Johnny, Line be good. Johnny, there we be go. Good. There you go. Johnny, Johnny be good. Good on you. All right, very good. There you go. You're so you're <laughs> yeah, yeah. A, you're a national athlete. That's sensational. Uh, so but I, but I can't say I did. I did, can't say I won the big race. I can only claim to have won my semi-finals when I was fifteen. Oh, that's all right. I, I mean, to, it, yeah, yeah, if, yeah. if we're representing your country, that rates pretty highly in my book. That's fantastic. So, I was pretty wrapped. I was pretty wrapped. So, so apart from uh, being an awesome person and organising, you know, a, a national a national competition, because, you know, you look at, like, X Factor and all that, people take for granted, mm, mm. it just happens. Like, but there's doesn't. a lot of organising well, and there's a lot of jobs created for other people in the industries. It's not just about the performers. And I know... That's right. I know, you know, um, back in the day, I may have had something to do with Big Brother. I can't say what. However, the um, even though a lot of people were knocking it, that's cool, whatever... But 
the industry that it created, you know, all the, the film editing for all the sound guys, mm, for, mm. you know, all the, all the people, drivers, blah, 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 is amazing. But anyway, I want to get to uh, your guitar making skills because you actually made a guitar, okay. you told me. I did. I had a bucket list wow. um, that I thought I'd better start really looking at seriously last year. Okay. I had a, I had a year of reflection last year and, and uh, the light bulbs went on and uh, I had a, a small cabin, a cabin if you like, a retreat built yep. so that I could um, sort of leave something in the future to as a, as a studio or an art studio, something like that. So I've been developing this. So anyway. About okay, I'll just zoom five, in, zoom, zoom um, in yeah, for the guitar. Cool. Here we go. So this is hand built, handcrafted by moi, myself, under the guidance and help of a gentleman by the name of Johan. Wow. What so woods are they the in? This is Kauri, native woods in New Zealand. And it's got inlays now, in there too. Wow. It has. These are my designs. Um, this is a little bit busy. This is my first attempt. But I, designed, I designed this slightly different for the bridge and asked if he could sort of keep in with a little power shower for me. So we, we lasered this in. And then I wanted to have my signature heart and this is the signature I use on all my stuff which is my LA with a little kiss with a heart this is my logo so I thought well we'll try this and I've had it made I've made it to to fit my hand so because I could never as a guitarist I'll just show you because I got a little hand I could never reach four frets where now I can without using a capo um, so very slightly I've inlaid these the frets just maybe a millimetre closer so that the neck is not quite as long. You can hardly tell, but the so neck is not quite scale. as long. It's just a really scale. slightly, yeah. yeah, just very, very slightly. And um, like if I gave it to Chris Barclay or you to play, you'd probably go, oh, that's a little bit little. But oh, I've, no, got, I've, got, I've, got, I've, I've got a deceptive hand. I do not have um, as but long the fingers as they look. You know? I, think that's a, um, I, I think that's a good tip for get anyone getting uh, making mm. a custom, custom uh, guitar as original artists. Absolutely. Is that if you get it made for yourself, this is an instrument you're going to keep for like another thirty years or whatever. I know. Well, it, well, it is. I mean, I'll, I'll never give this one up. You know, I mean, right. the, This is my first try at it, and yeah. um, most that's amazing. Mm. Most even the interior pieces. Um, I've got lots of photos on my website, lots of photos on my Facebook page. I can forward to if you like, and it shows the actual build and each mm. step of what you do, and all the little intricate bits inside that that you make to specific thinness and size so that when you tap the guitar in different places, it actually has a tone of its own. So when you're playing right. it over time, maybe about a year from now, this will just be singing, you know. Wow. So it's, and, it's, it's, it's an art, yeah. Mm. And the other question I was going to ask is, did you actually choose to have it naturally finished or did you want to colour? No, I wanted it like? natural. I've, I haven't done any. Um, this is oiled, about six layers of oil that you rub in. Oh wow! Okay. So this is a, a special oil that we use to um, give it that more matte finish. Okay, I'll just so zoom not, in again. Not, there we go. It's not as protected as if it was the shiny surface, but the 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 lack of the shiny surface. Um, well, it gets marked easily too, I guess. I mean, I use a Walden and a Take a Mini. Don't hold that against me. <laughs> take right. a Mini. Um, it's a beautiful, right. guitar. they're beautiful guitars. Um, but this this one, you know, it's there are things about it that are, I'd like to improve on in my next one. Um, and I'm very fortunate I'm doing a ukulele and another guitar soon. But oh, my, wow. my, my main interest... Uh, uh, Hey, I've Steve. got lot, hundreds of designs I want to have inlaid hey, on. Hey. Oh, well. Hi. I want to have inlaid on wood, Veronica. you see. Get That's amazing. That's cool. So, so, uh, yeah. so, so you built your guitar, and what else have you done uh, for your, your own career now in being an independent artist? What else have you done? Well, thanks for as asking. Um, because I know I, Veronica's, yeah. Veronica's on here. and uh, So, Veronica, if you're listening... L.A. Thompson is an artist, and we're going to get to the art, so stay tuned. So, <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. So Veronica's our um, local – well, actually, I don't even know where Veronica lives. 
Yes. Are you an yes. artist? Oh, fabulous. fabulous. Hey, Hi, Veronica. Hello. So, uh, but, yeah, I mean, I'd love to show you some artwork shortly, but if you, if yeah, you we'll want do to have the guitar a quick, stuff. quick squiz. Yeah. The, I mean, the guitar is a piece of artwork now too, which I love. Right. Um, it's a functioning um, guitar as well. So my first, I mean, I've done music before this, but the first time I, I decided to um, put together an eight-track, my someone who... I didn't know it was my cousin, it turned out to be my cousin, did the artwork for me and he photoshopped it that much. He was a desktop publisher, graphic artist like me. I'm a bit of a graphic artist. He, he kind of, mm, I think he stripped about 10 years off me at the stage, made me look 15. Um, not, uh. good. <laughs> not, not good. Not, good. A, not good. There's a um, comment for your guitar there from Gary was Thompson. It, it, G'day, Gary. Nice. Uh, nice. Well Thank built you very guitar. much. Thank you very much. It, it actually oh, shaved the top of my fingers off. I've got the proof. I was wearing the plasters the day it happened. So oh, I right, all okay. about, yeah, got too close to the band. You know, the sanders that go about 10,000 miles an hour? Yeah, right. You've got, you've got to use that. And I had this tiny, tiny piece of interior wood. And I said to Johan, you can't let me do that again. Please give me a hand sander. Because I was holding it really hard up. And it's going like this. And it went, and I went, <laughs> my first first day I spent bandaged up <laughs> oh wow so, yeah that that was my first one I never released this so I've just released it on Bandcamp as of today yeah um and then came along deciding to give my real name which is Shirley so along came oh. another one and then Hello, along Shirley. came a DVD <laughs> my first <laughs> <G'day>. <laughs> <laughs> and the next one yeah, yeah the Shirley Nut Shirley Nut um oh. I didn't use my name Shirley Howe because I kept getting called. Hey Rick. Hey Rick. When I lived in Melbourne, yep. and when I lived in Melbourne, when I was seventeen, and I got there was a program called Cheryl the Girl, and it, this guy with a gollywog hairdo, and all I can remember was Cheryl the Girl, and I was like, "There's no <laughs> freaking way. There's no way I'm going back home to be a rock star called Cheryl the Girl." You know. <laughs> right. So LA. Is that how you got? So how did you get your name L.A. Thompson? How did that happen? Well, I won't go into all the long, boring part, but um, basically I found my mother in Australia, my birth mother, and her maiden name was Thompson. Her father had raised me a little bit and said, oh, we've got a singer in the family, so that was pretty cool. So Thompson came from that, much to my, my father's dismay, and um, being the first wife, of course. Anyway, anywho, L.A., I got in a bit of a state on too many of your fosters, foster yeah. lager, and um, oh, right. <laughs> yeah, threw away the cigarettes, declared to the world that I was going to be a rock star in Los Angeles. So L.A. Thompson was born. <laughs> right. So that's a, that's yeah. a good, uh, what do they call that um, when you say it all the time? Uh, NLP, uh, Neuro Linguistic Pro Programming. Yeah. Show so, the girl, girl, yeah. Show the girl, show the girl. <laughs> so I decided not to be show the girl with curly hair. And then that's my latest before we went digital completely. Um, Hang on, I'll just zoom in on that one. Can you just show oh, us yep. that one again? So that's my latest album. Yeah. So how many albums have you done now, LA? Full albums, probably only about five and a bunch of EPs. And I mean, if you like, I'll, um, just for, for you mus musicians who do tune in, um, if you're producing singles, and in the day we always did EPs and albums, and we were encouraged to do 20 tracks, and so we did these big, long projects, you know. Well, now we're encouraged to do singles and choose maybe three of your top songs and go, right, which is that one song that I'm going to be remembered for. So that's something that I've been reminded about lately is we all follow someone. <laughs> Laws of Attraction, it? LA. Law of yeah. <laughs> <G'day>. yeah. <laughs> so it's all good. It's all good. So with the single, which I'm working on now, um, oh, yes. choose, choose, choose your, make sure your brand is strong, your look, your sound, you know your genre, you know your demograph, you know who you're going to play to, know the venue that's going to suit your music, the radio station. I mean, there's no point sending a punk rock song to a jazz radio station, you know. And this is, there's so many little things that artists just want to create. So they don't think of those things. They create a good product, but they, they forget that they've got to then invest in the promotions and the marketing. And, I mean, you're, you're offering us something that's very, very invaluable. I mean, thank I've been you. on Australian yeah. radio. No, thank you. 
um, really, really rapped that Chris Barclay was, you know, yeah, on your cool. show and invited him and said, look, you've got to get hold of this guy and got to go on his show. He's fabulous. And sure enough, you here you are and here I am. <laughs> Rock and fabulous. roll, rock and, and roll. Fabulous. Yeah, yeah, rock and roll. And actually, but, talking yeah. about uh, marketing, Marshall <laughs> is a great yeah. bass player too. He would like your uh, website. What's your socials to get your record? Dub- yes, yeah, thank you. Um, www.lathompson.co.nz and all my links on the top. At the moment, most of the tracks are just on Bandcamp and there's a demo on there as well. I'm about to launch into, again, going back to the aggregator distributor you want to use. <laughs> Um, yeah, there's some good ones, eh? I mean, you've got CD Baby, you've got TuneCore, you've got this, that, and the other thing. You've got, I think you've even got Gyro Stream in Australia now. Um, yeah. yeah, I think I that's in to, uh, Brisbane. Is it? Is it? Yeah, yeah. Because I met the guy who owns it. He used to work oh. for. Um, yeah, what happened was we got invited to, or everybody got invited to Global Summit at Roundhead Studios, which is owned by the Finn Brothers Crowded House. That's Rick. He's just saying bye. He's a great play- bass player too. Sorry. Yeah. Owned oh, by I need, a fin- good, need a good sorry. bass player. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> Chris and I need a good bass player. <laughs> anyway, I'm just going to. Oh, I got it. That's better. Um, yes. So, long story short. Finn Brothers. Global, global um, Summit met the owner of Gyro Stream. He just started out, apparently. So yeah. he was showcasing, talking all day long for four days, poor, poor guy. But I think I had an hour in his workshop and asked. I was, I'm one of those people that probably annoy a lot of um, presenters because I'll ask the hard questions. Oh. You know, you know you'll hear people say, oh, I can do this for you and I can do that for you and spend this money and I'm going to make you 10, 10 million strength, whatever, you know. And I'll be the person that will <laughs> – I'll be the He's a bass player too. Will, Yep. Oh, God, why can't we get dozens of bass players in New Zealand doing this? Uh, Marshall's a great bass player too. They're in, it's so hard to find a good one that will actually be loyal to a band these days. They all pump themselves out everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how they get good, I guess. Yeah. I know, I know. Sorry, but anyway, back back to the story about, uh, so, Tim, Gyro Global. Stream. Yep, yep. Gyro, Gyro Stream. Stream owner, can't remember his name, but I've got his card. He spoke to us about... Um, his digital distributor being a digital distributor to iTunes, Spotify blah 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 and I've been thinking about going with him and I've decided I will because I've tried CD Baby I've tried our New Zealand DRM and um, the risk that you take going with any aggregator is your one in millions so you can still got to promote even if, it doesn't matter how many platforms you put your song on if you don't promote that platform if you don't promote that you're there Nobody's going to know. I mean, who, who's L.A. Thompson? Other than circles in New Zealand well, and maybe a little so, bit of a circle in, in Western Australia and now here, you know? Yeah, right. Well, usually it's Los Angeles and now we've got a new one called Laws of Attraction. So there you go. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yes. Hey, that's good. I'm going to use that. Laws of Attraction. <laughs> now when someone asks me, what does L.A. stand for? I can say Law of Attraction. Oh, there you go. I like uh, it. I like Raymond. it. Raymond. <clears throat> I can't really say what's in it, mate. I can't really say. Aussie, oh, you got Australia? you got to cut. Oh, you have to bring your cup over a bit. Okay. Is, I went. Oh, here we go. That way. Where, where is it? I went to Perth. Oh. I nearly moved. I nearly moved there this year, actually. Oh. Um, because I've lived in Melbourne and I wanted to hey, go visit. I'm going to come visit Brisbane and Melbourne and Sydney and Gold Coast and stuff. But I wanted to go on tour, so I was starting to book a tour, and I uh, had to cancel because of the COVID nineteen. So you bought a cup. No, because I um, cancelled the got... tour. <laughs> <laughs> I went there. I, I slid on my arm. wave rock. Yes, yeah. I, I, I slid been there on my too. backside. I went, that is that's a fun. phenomenal thing, isn't it? Yeah, wave rock. Wow. And I and I saw these, of course. What else did I see? Did you go to Rottnest Island? No, I you can see I the quokkas. No, I went to Margaret River though. Loved it. All right. Oh, the way straight to the wine. <laughs> Actually, oh, you wait. don't you you live on a. a you live on an orchard or something, don't you? What kind of orchard do you live on? This is a mostly avocado orchard okay. with a bit of fruit. And there are some grapes, but the grapes are further down the road where I intend making lots of friends very soon. I've only lived out here a year and a half. Oh, yeah, um, fair enough, because I remember you showing me some awesome, you know, picturesque sunset, you know, mountains, <laughs> you know, yes. green everywhere you see. So getting back to, um, so you're going to go with dry stream, because I know with my stuff, I 
Uh, I've been using DistroKid. Uh, yeah, people have said that's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Pretty good. But I guess I, I really like what you said. It doesn't really matter like what you actually put it out there with because if you don't support it with any marketing, uh, and that's what I want to, to talk, want to, talk to you about, right, is that, I mean, because every, every band's got a CD, I guess, but it's, you know, mm. moving forward, we need to have a digital delivery device. And so, a promotions manager and all that kind of stuff, you know. You need, you need to have your marketing team. So you've worked with um, you've worked with lots of people promoting their product, and I know um, what we were talking about before. We'll get to your story about what you've been doing. But what tips could you give people to engage and get their stuff out there? Right. Well, you won't be making the mistakes I made in the beginning because um, I Love hopefully I've yesterday. learned, learned from those. Awesome. Um, oh, that was for the yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I know. Uh -huh. I know. <laughs> That's why I'm going awesome. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Over, over to you. Over to you. It's, it's all good. It's all good. Um, I get, as you notice, I got easily distracted. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. The, the thing with marketing is once you have a product, you've got to look at the quality of that product, as you know, yourself uploading to, um, was it called Disco? Uh, dis distro. This distro kid, that's yeah, right. Yeah, a disco and kid I've, I've, usually does this. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I have a feeling you don't do that music. <laughs> well, I, I really like the uh, funk. Mm. Uh huh. Awesome. So marketing, I started a promotions business. I don't know, six years ago. And um, if I'd known what I was going to get myself in for, how much work was involved, how much research, would I have done it? Well, maybe, but um, I have no regrets now. I have met the most amazing people. So, getting back to marketing, a lot I personally believe depends on the quality of your recording and production. If you are gonna say to yourself, "Okay, I want to be number, you know, in the top twenty or number one in my field, in my country, or internationally," you know, that's your goal. Okay, some people have a goal of just wanting to get, um, be able to perform live at an open mic, you know, have the confidence to do that. But if you've got a pro, if, if, you're, if you're commercially driven as well as indie, we're indie driven, but we've got a commercial side, we want to make some money out of this or we right. want to get known, then I would, number one, employ me to <laughs> sit you down. <laughs> First, you get your first half hour. I mean, I used to just do it for charity. I used to sponsor. In fact, right up until June of this year, I've been sponsoring. Okay, so all these albums and all this stuff has been 90% sponsored. And the reason I know that is I paid an Australian to promote me last year. And I know what it costs to get two weeks two weeks wow. worth of promotions. So now I know what it takes. And now I know what they did for me. And for how long and how much, you know, so I have to look at what I'm and value what I do now. So I've done my apprenticeship. So I would suggest this. Stay self-managed, absolutely. You know, stay your own publisher even, unless you're right up there where someone's going to notice you, which again is all about promotions and marketing and having, having a good management team behind you. Learn all that stuff yourself, absolutely. You know, do the DIY stuff. But if you want to save yourself some time and some money in the long term, get you your go. team behind you. Who's this? Raymond. Self promotion never hurts. Exactly. Yeah. Now we have this thing in New Zealand. I don't know what you have in Australia about. Oh, you know, self promotion. You just it's all your ego. No, it's not. It's called There's a lot we, of tall we, poppy. That's what I was just about to poppy. say. It's tall poppy syndrome. Yeah. And as far as I'm concerned, those honestly, I'm not going to swear, but stick the tall poppy where the sun don't shine because I, I don't want to hear it anymore. I I believe in self promotion. You, you you know, it's your journey. So self promotion, self marketing, self um, learn. You know, learn from other people. Mm. You know, investigate, research, find what radio stations actually suit your genre. Find. Um, Spotify playlists. Here's a little hey, trick I learned. So here's a little trick for your marketing. When you upload and have your song, a song on Spotify, yep. iTunes, etc., add a whole bunch of awesome music that is similar to your song. And you know your song might be amongst a hundred of the songs that you've got on your playlist. And then right. invite everyone, invite all your friends and family, everybody, to 
um, add that playlist to this. So your song's on there, you see. Right, so because then it will start trending, whole, trending on the yeah, algorithm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. Exactly. So that's something I only just recently found out, and that's something mm. I wish I'd known a long time ago. But when it comes to digital, it's it's still evolving throughout the world. I've had meetings with um, our recorded music people who get us our codes and, and uh, collect royalties on our behalf and all that kind of stuff. They work alongside APRA AMCOS, which is ASCAP, you know, so forth and so on. So yeah. with the marketing and promotions, even though I believe in self-management and self-marketing, we're so close to our own product, I do believe you need someone like myself who understands the industry, who's been there, done that, is having a little bit of success in certain circles because sometimes you don't, or a lot of success in some circles, a lot of people don't know what goes on behind the scenes. They don't know yeah. that I got gifted this to do because yeah, yeah, of... Right. Because I'm a good salesperson, and they they know that I'll sell a few of these for them, you know. Right, so you're they, technically endorsed. Do, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I've been endorsed by the Van der Gaar Guitars Studio in Cambridge, and he's a Dutchman who actually makes his money out of tomatoes, just for the record. Um, oh, oh. Yeah, right. Oh, we, he's the founder. And we got, of, you know. Yeah, that's all. We got two we questions. Got we got two questions. So yes, how how does that pay? So you know. How does it pay? As in, yeah, how do we convert? So yeah, what Leanne just put that up just before about what you're saying about, you know, getting your music out there, etc. Yes. How do they convert that to an income? An, an income. Okay. First question: Do you perform live? You yeah. better, you know, do you have your indie music, your originals, and a covers re repertoire? What's your? Because nine times out of ten, even though there's a lot more venues loving our original music which is, you know, you can dig your heels in if you want to, but you need right. to, there's that side of it. So get your, get your presence out in the marketplace. So if you want people to buy your songs, sing other people's songs, honour them, you know, right. and as well. So market and think, yourself visually. Out yeah, there, and I think, um, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, Leanne was mm -hmm. speaking, how does it, you know, that idea that you said about trending the algorithm in Spotify? Yes. So how, by doing that playlist, and I, I don't know. Encourage. Uh, Basically, you know when we used to talk about rent a crowd for a live performance, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we, of course, used to, course. we used to joke about rent a crowd for a live performance when you're starting out, all right? So you invite all your friends and family. Thanks, well, you're doing the same thing with Spotify or anything. You, I got told the other day to play, and I've never done this. I've been on Spotify for years, and I've never done it, and I've got to start doing it every single day. Play my entire albums, all my songs. Right, so it starts trending. On shuffle, just just once, even if it's once right. a day. You know, right. and I ask all my friends and family to do it. Uh, we discussed, I think, earlier today, find 100 to 200 people who are your super fans. They take time. Yeah, yeah, I was talking you know, to you about that. You know, they take time yeah. to find. Yeah, yeah, you were. And you were, yeah. I was told 100, you said 200, I agree. Yeah. 200 super fans take time to build those relationships. You know, when they comment, comment back. You know, mm. when they message you, don't fob them off. Um, how do you turn all of that um, marketing into income? Well, some say buy this, buy that, you know, buy your likes, buy your streaming. Buy. I, I disagree to a point because I'll give you an example. My Facebook page, Chris's Facebook page. In the day when it cost a dollar a day to advertise your Facebook page to crowds of people that you didn't know to get them to listen to you and see you, and you did that, you ended up with, say, seven, 8,000 fans or 100,000 fans, but they yeah. only came and saw you once. That right. Facebook page got looked at once. So how do you yeah. get people to keep coming back? Well, you're, you're learning yourself, aren't mm -hmm. you, or you've done it yeah, by doing well, the I show. By doing right. the show, so be visual. That's I guess that's what I'm saying. You know, stream live, play your song. Or get if you don't sing, get someone else to sing your songs. But you I know? maybe would unpack that for Leanne. So uh, this is a model that I'm um, I'm learning and trying to implement. So uh, something I learned from the states. I mean, it could have been from yes. anywhere really. I just said it. But um, uh, model of the super fan. So any kind of like me, even yourself. If you look at yourself, whatever you're into. 
I'm into Fender Stratocasters. Cool. So I actually spend a lot of money on that because I like it. Cool. Yes. I'm into yes. motorcycles. I spend a lot of money on it. So what I'm saying is with a super fan, whatever band, you know, I'm a Steve Vai fan. So, yeah, I've spent I way spend more than I spend money on – absolutely, yeah. Right. So the, the super fan model is 200 people who spend $100, right, right, a year. So this is the first step. That's so if right. you have 200 people with 100 bucks, your merchandise, they come and see you play live or That's $20,000. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what, and you're dead right. That's exactly what you need to do is start so that's off how it with pays. 5 people, 10 people, 20 people, right. 30 people, you know, so forth and so on. And you'll surprise yourself how quickly that can grow. And you're mm. right, whether they spend $20, $100 by the end of the year, they've spent at least $100 on you. And and you here's know. another thing too is uh yeah, I, t I agree. I mean with uh, there was this awesome book called uh, "Hey You in the Black T-shirt." I, I think it was written by Gudinski or Michael Chug. My point being, hey, I'm actually wearing a black T-shirt, so they're actually. And are you wearing a black T-shirt? No, uh, it's blue. <laughs> oh, okay, uh, so here's my point. I'll change if it, you want. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, highlighting that um, people were wearing the black T-shirt. So I'm just going to use this genre just as an example. Heavy metal, metal fans. They're they're, what they're sort of talking about, say, hey, you in the black T-shirt, because they spend the money on merchandise. Like every biggest band in the world, like it's hard to make money from uh, from music now, so that they merchandise, so they tour. That's, right. That's why Bon Jovi still Hence touring. Hence the guitars. You know? right. People buy so, these. You know, people but, buy my designs. Yeah. And That's I think Raymond said you... your your fan base will always be there when you oh, – Chuggy. There we go, Shinbone Star. Yeah, Chuggy. Uh, thanks, Shinbone. He's he's cool too. And I got a I got a Excellent. couple of people. He, Ray, Raymond said here he tries to encourage to put their videos out on. So Raymond runs a very very popular uh, Aussie pub rock. So Raymond, are we allowed to put New Zealand Great. pub rock on there? <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm half yeah. Aussie. I'm oh right, out. okay, fair enough, fair enough. Marshall <laughs> says tall poppy syndrome is said by insecure people. Yes, so it is. And Leanne, I hope we answered your question there. I guess in the beginning. It probably doesn't pay, but you just got to keep at it, right? It doesn't happen overnight, but it will happen. No, yeah. it won't. I mean, it, 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 persistence, you know, persistence. Um, just knowing your demograph in particular, you know. I've, I've, I used to make the mistake when I was younger, performing live. Um, there you go. I not just only, got permission. You know, sorry, sorry. Got permission. You, right. got permis you got permission to put your music on um, his site. I'll send oh, you the link afterward. Yes, please. Thank you so much. <laughs> awesome. You rock. You rock. Awesome. And by the way, motorbikes. I didn't know you were into motorbikes. I've been riding since I was eight. Uh, yeah, I, I, my, I graduated to a Harley. So yeah. My 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 brother um my brother who's um well my half brother he um he raced superbike. Oh wow. Yeah. So he he's not with us unfortunately. He um okay. We lost him doing what he loves most. Right. And that was always kind of maybe on the cards. But he was riding as a little, little youngster. I got my first motorbike when I was um, eight. I think I was the envy of the school. So I used to milk that for all it's worth, <laughs> bringing wag school and take home uh, the, the boys and the girls and get on the back and around the all car All right. Park. So you're into posing was, a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> mm. My nana lived to 102, and she used to say to me, um, "Wow, she'd go like this. She'd go like this. She said, I haven't got a creative bone in my body, Shirley. And she could sing like an angel. And I'm like, nana, really? You're not creative. Come on. <laughs> did um, she get a letter from the Queen? Well, we did ask for one. I'm not I, – I should have asked okay. my uncle. I Just must ask. Actually, know, that's a good yeah. question. Yeah, because okay. I did ask our awesome family moment. to request one. So oh, I'll wow. have to find out, actually. I'm not sure. That's a good question. I have to ask Actually, you. thank you for, Leanne, uh, reminding me. Uh, everyone who's watching, please like and share and subscribe. Absolutely. And buy, buy L.A. Thompson's because I keep forgetting. I get so involved in the conversation, I keep forgetting. <laughs> Actually, I, I prepare all this stuff here. Uh, here's, here's my actual TV show called Make Some Noise because I actually sat okay. it on – and actually, to let you know, so I, when I'm soloing, I mean, I mean, I've only just met you for really ten minutes, really. But absolutely, um, when I'm soloing on stage, I may have been known to ex exaggerate the guitar solo, but when <laughs> someone else plays something, I actually—that's <laughs> <laughs> true. He's awesome. I met him in LA. He is I, awesome. 
yeah. California. We'll have to get him on very shortly. Uh, so anyway, my point being, where did, someone asked me where did the TV show name come from. I actually say make some noise for, you know, the drummer. Make some noise for the bass player. Yes, make, absolutely. Like, this is, that, that's what I actually say. So anyway, that's why the TV show is called that. Anyway, here's my now, YouTube is there thing. Any... Oh, Sorry, that you go. That's me. No, no, I was just going to say, is there anything else that anyone would like to know about the marketing and promo Good question. Side of things, or would you like to sort of move on to, you know, like art? <laughs> yes. Well, um, whatever, you be, whatever you want. Whatever you want. Well, yeah. So if anyone's got any more questions, and so Raymond says his site's got nearly twenty thousand members and growing. Fair so nice. it's it's a team effort. Yeah, it's good. And I think the strongest thing, um, this is just my two cents worth, is um, before they used to have a talent, you could just turn heads, gaining yes. attention just through your talent. But these days, it's it's personality. Because if you don't have a personality, um, <laughs> why would they want to pay attention to you? You know, like because there's true. talent. Talent is everywhere. You get on Instagram, you go, "Oh my god!" Like, oh look, talent. there's thousands of good singers, millions of good songwriters. You know, and and I count myself as being so fortunate. I'm so grateful to to have the legacy I I have. You know, I'm just a little blip in the universe. You know, like I'm I'm just one of many, but this is my journey, my personal journey. And Chris and I, like Chris Barclay has been um, working alongside me for over 15 years as a, a guitarist and, and he's a soloist and a fabulous songwriter in his own right. So we work together as often as we can over the years and um, that's why he's going to come and join us soon. But just very briefly, um, being that little blip, it, I don't negate the fact that, you know, last year I had to look at I was a little bit down about the whole situation. I had my album in my hand. I'd spent, finally finished this one, and I was like, what am I going to do with this? Okay, what's next? And I just went, okay. And I sat there with it, you know, and I didn't do anything with it. And I just sort of hit a wall for a wee while, and um, I had to really reflect and dig deep and make a decision on, okay, where to from here? Where to from here? You know, turn the page, start a fresh and go, right, that's that, that's complete, yep. that's written then, performed then, done and dusted, remixed, remastered, re done. So what are you going to do now? So I wrote, wrote a bunch of new songs, and I went, okay, this time I want it produced guitar-driven in the style that I'd like it. So if a producer, and that's the key too with a song, if producers won't listen to you, you yep. know, and listen to your story about what you want to hear, then move on to another producer. Don't, don't, don't keep staying there because it's not. If they're going to try and turn you into something you're not, which invariably I hear all the time. I hear guys say, "Oh, that's not what I wanted. I want 14 tracks, and I don't like any of them." You know, they wow. just spent 20 grand. You know, and I'm like, really? And you didn't stop that on the first song? Yeah. Well, I made I made the same mistake, but I must admit I'm still very happy with the results because you've also got to let some producers have some creativity in there. You know, mm. and and allow them to interpret your guitar and your words, um, your voice, and they see something you don't see. Like people see in me what I they see this rock chick, and I'm like, but I don't have a rock chick voice. I've only got the blonde hair. That's it. You know, okay, well, I, they I can brush up okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I can brush up okay in a pair of fake leathers, whatever. You know, fine. But so I've had a couple of bands want to back me for that reason, and I'm like, yeah go for it and I had fun but when it came to the songwriting I'm a lot more gentler I guess and if I was left to my own devices it's going to come out like a pop country folk rock kind of infusion kind of thing bring Chris Barclay into the mix and out comes a rock chip yeah. or yep. out, out comes a gentle because his guitar his versatility on guitar is, is, is huge so he when, when you connect with somebody like that mm. it's beautiful and that's what I love about having, if you put a country band behind me, my songs, you're going to have country. If you put a rock right. band behind me, you're going to have rock. Throw me it into the APRA, APRA Awards, Silver Scroll Awards, my first time there, and put um, Pluto or whatever band was behind us. Totally rewrite the song because the guitar's right. out of tune as well. <laughs> okay. So you, ne you never know. You never know what's going to happen in a jam situation. Well, so I just, just want to experiment, wanna... you know. Yeah, I think what you've highlighted there is a couple of points is about you can't fake chemistry. So no. if something's not working, maybe you need to change the people you surround yourself. I'm not sure if you heard of a guy called uh, 
Dan Pena. I, I don't know if you've heard of him. Uh, there's a, a mm, podcast sure. that happens in uh, London. And it's called London Real. And, Excellent. Uh, by Brian Rose. He's an American in, in England. Anyway, um, this guy, Dan Pena, he's, a, he's an amazing dude. He's very, very brutal. Um, he probably offends everyone. However, he has this <laughs> saying, and I, it's, I want to put this up, I actually. like him already. <laughs> this is his mantra. He goes, show me your friends. I will show you your future. Full stop. So that goes with everything you do when you, mm. you know, hang around real estate. If you want to be successful at real estate, don't hang around people who think real estate's bad. If you want to be That's successful right. at music, you need, need to uh, hang around you know, oh, there he is. <laughs> and uh, Hi, that's Chris. Chris. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, there he is. And um, oh, he loves London Real. I just had to. Sorry, it was the New Zealand accent. I couldn't really understand <laughs> it. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, I love that saying, show me your friends, I'll, I'll show you your future. So that really yeah. resonates with me, like with being around different mindset musicians, different Absolutely. mindset business, because... You've got you to know, have a completely positive reinforcement about what you're doing, who you are. Thank you, Raymond. Always. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, and, and, is it, you know. sorry, but even he, Raymond is an excellent example. I don't, I've never met Raymond face to face, but I can say that I already have a vibration of what he's resonating at because of the inter, interweb, you know. Mm, mm. Uh, he runs a group with 20,000 strong and he invited me to go to that, you know, like. Fantastic. Yeah, it's amazing. But, uh, before we get Chris on, we have to go to the art. <laughs> yes, I, I've got, I've got just something I rustled up earlier. <laughs> okay, and uh, um, and we'll come, Leanne. We'll get to your question very shortly. Here we go. Let's do the art. Okay. All you. All right. Well, as you as you've met Honey, my guitar Honey yes. is a is a work of art, and I, I love her. I've got a book of artwork which I won't bore you with because there's too many. But no, I no. decided. Let's do it. Okay, I um I was a bookbinder and a typographer, lithographer in my in my um my first jobs, and I really wanted to be a graphic artist, and that's why I kind of struggled between music and artwork, you know, which direction. Yep. So I just kept doodling. So I call these my doodles, and um, but they yeah. I drew this in pen, and then I had it laser engraved just recently on wood. So that's um just an example of some of the work I do. My and, uh, logo, it, and I, sorry? Yeah, I was going to ask, that's, is that one we just saw, is that on your guitar or? No, this one isn't. This one is. That's on my guitar. Wow. And what does it and mean? Is there anything that one. it means? Yeah. Well, I can, I can tell you that this, what this <laughs> possibly might mean. Yes, um, please. Let's go deep. If you look, I didn't, I never know what I'm about to draw back in the day. Um, so I'd, I'd start with something. And it would evolve. This one, if you were to ask a Māori, um, native of New Zealand, they would. A lady told me this was my mukul. So that was pretty amazing. So I don't. What is a what is a muku? Sorry, a I muku, don't know. A muku is what Māori women wear a tattoo on their chin, and, and men can have a full face muku. I think I think that's what a, a muku is. Is this? Um, please baby. forgive me. Please, be, please forgive me if it's not, if I'm incorrect. Um, I don't speak Māori. I'm yep. a native New Zealand. I'm fourth generation, so my family are kind of like Scots and Irish and German and yep. all sorts of bloody things. But I'm I'm a New Zealand born. So this one Passport. is my logo. Awesome. This one I this one is kind of representative of um, you could call that like a saxophone. Some call it a hook, guitar strings. However you want to look at it. So it was a it has some meaning behind that. So I've used that as part of my logo for years now. Um, but otherwise, I used to do life drawing and I got bored with it. I sort of didn't want to be a um, copyist. So um, I discovered this sort of free flow design, which when people want a signature, you know, if you want a signature or if you want something, a tattoo or something fancy on a guitar and then lay, then I'll design you something based on what you tell me or what you show me. Oh, wow, and, there um, we go. We have mm. a, a version of what it might mean. Yeah. Yin and yang, dark and light influence. That's it. Or someone else said, here, oh, Leanne said it might be an unborn baby. There you go. Prodigy. Oh, goodness. There's a piece of jewellery that someone made me in, 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 in um, 
It is. In yeah, um, Jay, in, in Greenstone. And I gave them this design talking about unborn babies. Blimmin' heck, I, I got a bit of a fright, really. They came back. The, their interpretation of my design, it came back a 3D fetus in a womb. And I looked at it and I went, holy moly. So your interpretation of my design, which is a real honour to get, you know, uh, uh, when a Māori um, or anybody makes you a piece of jewellery out of New Zealand um, greenstone, it's it's beautiful. And um, it was gifted to me. And they've told me that I can actually, because it's so huge, I can't wear it. They say I can slice it in half and make two. Oh, and then I can cool. take it to somebody and get them to make it into something else using that design. So I've got someone local who's going to do that for me. Wow! And here's an, mm. Leanne saying, "Yes, it is." Hello. Is the and the yes and the masculine and the feminine energy? Yeah. Wow. Yes, you're you're correct. I've got a piece of jewelry I designed that says exactly that, and it's mm. like there's a fish and you turn it up that way and it's a male and female. So it's it's interesting wow. what you draw and you don't even know you're drawing it, you know, until later on. So. Right, because um, there's definitely like I like what the first drawing. I find this playing guitar is yep. that when when you're in the flow state, yes, you know, I'm, I'm going a bit. And deep art here. is the same, yeah. Art is right, the same. right. So it's yep. almost dry. I mean, everyone does this, but people do it through different tactiles or different kinesthetic motions. So That's right. sometimes uh, an example would be when you're driving, and you're like, oh, I'm in Byron Bay, and I just left Brisbane. Yeah. You know, like. You know, time, <laughs> time and happen? space, time and space, like, whoa, they're just out of sync right. and then like, oh, here it is. So flow state. So with being, well, this, I'm just describing it. Being how I, creative. Yes. Yeah, being in the moment. So, yes, I can play the solos note for note or whatever if I spent the time sure. doing it. But at being your own artist, I want to do my own thing. So Absolutely. Uh, I mean, it's like talking when you don't think about it. We turn the you conscious mind. It. And we actually connect subconscious, yeah. And um, I agree. And art uh, is the same. When I've drawn all these, I'm, right. I'm it's it's that. It's it, same it's with songwriting. Happened. If I don't write a song within a few seconds, autopilot, yeah, right. That's it, you know. And and a, a, your best work is like that. It, the, you're not thinking about it. You're not struggling with the words. You're not struggling with the melody. It's just bang, it's there. And you that's when you know of, you're onto something. It remind me of Yoda. I mean, not how you look, but I'm talking about <laughs> what he said. In, uh, Yoda, like he says in Star Wars, I'm because I'm a Joseph Campbell fan. Excellent. <laughs> Sorry, well, I should have probably no, chose no, better no. words to describe that. No, it's all good. Uh, it's all good. <laughs> alpha, alpha waves. Yes, Chris, jump on, please. Jump on, please, Chris. Um, Yoda says there is no try, like because like. W- right. The word try, like you're just doing it. If you're doing a bad job of it, you picking are a doing ball. picking a ball you, or whatever. <laughs> like there is no try. Like anyway, this is really deep. People, maybe some people actually no, disagree. Or a hundred percent. It's not two. I think all creative people are going to relate to what you and I have just been speaking about. You, you're completely correct. Uh, here we go. I play in a. Oh yeah, Phil, playing a band Hello, in Phil. New Zealand called Sex Beard. How can I contact Ooh. you and talk further about sponsors and promotion? There you go. Actually, I fabulous. I, I did a gig with Sex Beard, the band. Um, okay, not the beard or the. <laughs> Sorry, uh, on, Phil. You're going to have to tell a, me. There's got to be a story behind that name, mate. Eh? <laughs> well, there probably is, but I sure. I can't even remember the town. It was a big port. I remember the loading was out port, of control. I can't like remember. Ports of Auckland Phil, or something. Phil will have to tell me, remind me of what town it was. I was on tour and, and I was touring New Zealand, and um, yeah, and I did all. I was actually. Are you going to come in, back? Are you going to come back to New Zealand sometime? Yeah, I used to. This is a, a truth to tell. I used to teach music in New Zealand at a um, no way. a polytech. I was lecturing okay. uh, guitar. Way, in Auckland or Dunedin, uh, down south, no, up north. In in Invercargill, would you believe? Where Chris mm. Barclay is from. No way. Here he is, this and that's way. right on cue. There we go. There hey, he Chris. is. Nice to see you, buddy. He's coming. I, I think wow. He is. Woo. Yeah, there you go. Hey, How you hey. going, sir? Look at us. Good. Hey, hey bud. <coughs> Am I coming through? Oh, yes. Lillerton. There we go. Lillerton. Thank you, Phil. L- little, I don't even know how to say that town. Littleton. 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 All it's, I remember it's out. Yeah. is there's these fishing boats and... Um, Yes. Massive boats, I and I. Sp- <laughs> this sounds really weird, but it was interesting to me. Uh, thank you, Phil. And we play up and down. 
Uh, we play up and down. Can I New answer? Before. Can I just answer Phil's question? Yes. How he, how he can contact me? Yeah. Yes, of course. You better do he that. He can con he can contact me directly through you or directly on my timeline. Mate. I've still got make friends on Facebook with La Thompson and message me and uh, yeah, happy to happy to have a chat. It'd be great. <laughs> Six pm. Do or do not is Yoda. Sorry, I just called LA Thompson Yoda. Sorry about that. Uh, it, I mean, anyway, I've been called worse. It's okay, mate. It's okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, about um, <laughs> Littleton. Um, yeah. It was all these boats, and I, I don't know this sounds random because I was a tourist play, or musician, <laughs> but I was like, where did I get all the fish from? It's a stupid question, but I, it was a little bit deeper than that. Sure. So this is what I learned: is they have these uh, like holding. Uh, stations out in the ocean so all these other little fishing boats will collect it collect all the fish the crayfish? chuck it in i, I don't know oh, what fish but they just yeah. keep it in a holding station and then they have like one big boat comes from land goes to one point picks up all the fish right. and i was like how efficient is that there was no pun intended there but no i just thought it was very efficient mm. anyway very good. over to chris probably not about so chris is an amazing guitarist as well so yes. Can, what can you tell me some uh, rock and roll stories working with L.A. Thompson? <laughs> can, Backbeat. Can, can you hear us? Can you hear us, Chris? Okay. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, we can it's hear you. A little bit delayed. Hmm. Did you get the question, well, Chris? I changed computers. I'll try the computer. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I'll, I'll kick you off. I'll kick you off. Okay. We'll come back in a minute. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, um, anyway, oh, well, we'll get back to the rock and roll stories very shortly. But, okay, but what about yourself? What's your uh, craziest rock and roll story? Because well, you've been in many, yeah. I've thrown together quite a few bands, I must admit. Um, What's the craziest gig you've done or the, like, the scariest gig you've done? Well, the, a, a cool gig was when we had 12 trucks parked along Ponsonby Road and I got to play on my own with, and with a bunch of people as part of a big parade. That, that was a, a highlight. A crazy one would have been um, on the, I think it was another truck. There's a lot of trucks around. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and this one started moving. I think, I don't know quite why um, it started moving, but um, that was a little bit of a hairy experience because all the, PA gears set up, you know, your lighting and everything else and the truck's starting to move. So um, I don't know what the hell the guy was on, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he did get stopped in time before everything cleared off. I had a couple of um, times where I was experimenting with um, new players. Oh, here you go. Of course. The best one of all. Um, just left Melbourne, got I home from Melbourne. Okay, so I'd been living in Melbourne for nearly two years. Yep. I'd had my 18th birthday over there, screamed over to Auckland, ran off, as you do, um, jumped, on a, jumped on a train, um, met a stranger, and we won't, we, won't, we won't go into any details. So I'll incriminate, <laughs> incriminate, incriminate myself. You are rock and roll. Spent, oh, man. I spent, no, get this, I spent my last three and a half grand that I'd saved I bought an electric guitar, an amplifier, a ticket to Christchurch to see my dad. He hadn't seen me in two years, didn't know where I was. <laughs> Turned up, left. I, I went to this nightclub. I went to the studio in Wellington, left my electric guitar and amplifier with a band. They said they were going to make me a rock and roll chick. Went, left it there, said, oh, yeah, I'll be back tomorrow. Didn't hear from them. Didn't hear from them. Anyway, um, the electric guitar and amplifier went west. And um, I met another guitarist and hooked up with him and ended up somehow <laughs> managing to get on a bus with this <laughs> woman. And we celebrated New Year's on the ferry, coming back to Wellington, hitched a ride with some bloke who got us into a motel and she hooked up with him. Then we ended up in Hamilton and I stayed in Hamilton. <laughs> so I had like a year from the time I got back from Australia Wow. I've been living living with family, and I got let loose on um, the New, on New Zealand, and just went wild for about a year. And went busking and playing, and it was it was a good time. But gee, I can't remember much of it. Um, oh wow! No, I don't remember. Very... Much, I don't remember much of it. I must admit. So I didn't actually end up back in Australia, which is what I was going to do. 
<laughs> oh. I ran out of money. I ran out of money by the end of the, by the, end of the year and found myself working at uh, a new apprenticeship as a typographer in Cambridge. And now I'm back in Cambridge. Go figure. Doing oh, guitar. Wow. There you go. So it all came around. That's, full circle. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, so I have the a uh, rock check ended up. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have a strange uh, rock and roll story, and I'm sure we'll ask. Uh, Chris to do actually here we go we have uh that was excellent there you go Marshall said that was an excellent story there uh, Mer- <laughs> that was the short version thank god <laughs> uh, Mercury Bay in New Zealand looks like the Maldives best snapper fishing dropping my oh. line in between blue oh I don't right. even know where that is penguins I calling out on. I can't read it uh most beautiful place she's ever been so Mercury Milford Bay Milford Sounds Milford Sounds honestly if you can get to Milford Sound. Yeah. Well, uh, my rock and roll story, oh, I've got lots of them. I was uh, playing in the Eagle show and there was a drum riser ah. and they had another <coughs> riser for me. Drum roll. Oh, the drum riser was higher than my riser and then the floor was here. Anyway, I was being an idiot and I was jumping in between. In between. The the I think we got an echo there, Chris. I think we just have to turn down the source. Um <clears throat> Yes, yeah, so I was jumping up and off the drum riser. Anyway, I was trying to be smart and I grabbed the cymbal, you know, on, on the fore end, on the fore end because you, you have, yep. Then I was jumping back. Anyway, as I've jumped back, I've slipped and yes. I've actually landed, landed on my back, uh, on my own riser. So as wow. everyone was watching, it was like, oh, yeah, cool. And then the, I just yeah. take a dive. The whole band thought it was hilarious, but I couldn't stop playing. So... <laughs> And because I was wearing these slippery shoes, I couldn't actually get up. It looked like a cockroach oh, trying to roll so over. <laughs> so I actually finished finished a gig on my back. Finished the song, actually. Finished the song. That's classic. Mm. That's cl- I hope mm. there's photos of that somewhere. I hope not. It was and Chris, okay, it's Chris's turn to, to tell us. Um, Rock and roll drama. Experience, ex- experience with myself and our band or as a duo, is there anything that stands out that was like a – a highlight or an absolute disaster or i don't think we ever had a disaster i thought the name that you came up with this afternoon was pretty good yeah <laughs> was it six panthers <laughs> six panthers, <laughs> six panthers. <laughs> yeah. yeah what do you think chris but we were called story? instinct we're actually called instinct and lace not base yeah. not basic instinct <laughs> 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 Oh man! Sorry. No, anyway, no, no, no. Chris, Maybe your I'll turn. Get a bit hot in here. Well, can you hear me, all right, guys? Yep. Yes. Oh, awesome. Um, I, I kind of just uh, got on the got on the um, sound now, so I might have missed a little bit. <laughs> oh, okay. So the question, the question, the question was, uh, rock and roll story uh, with working with La Thompson. Oh, um, something funny, embarrassing. Oh, it's quite a few, actually. There's quite a few. Um, sex cells. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ray, Raymond says sex cells. Do, do, I, do I remember any of these? Um, you guys are. There's quite a few, right. actually. Top three. Top three. Oh, um, top three. <laughs> well, one, one of the things that people think is... Oh, it's we're, lovely we're, weather we're having. Yeah. <laughs> one, you can't get a freaking word in, eh? Can you come <laughs> We're in here, boys. Give me a That's the first thing. No. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, like I said, there's quite a lot. I remember, I remember, um, I told Doug this story before, so I won't tell, um, go into much detail, but turning up to that, that gig at Galatos with a big 100 watt Marshall oh, stash. Oh, shit. The country, yeah. the country gig. And, and um, yeah, <laughs> I've got, got, yeah, got, it was, it was that last night. <laughs> I've got a lot of things about that. <laughs> So um, you, you went to a country gig with a 100 watt Marshall stack? Yeah, oh, yeah, my that. goodness. That's yeah. rock and roll music. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Um, I had to do it. I had to do it. And, yeah, and I, I, was, I was turned down the whole night, so it was tricky. Uh, Don't forget else? the time I asked you to turn yourself up and the sound guy said, he's loud enough. Oh, yeah. That's King's right. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah but we had out, out, yeah, out the King's Arms and Wilkham. We it was a bit more rock, a bit of a rockier gig. And um, yes. we had a whole band. And I was playing playing in the back. And I was trying to get louder. And... And then I got too loud and I was saying to Shrek, Shrek, I'm a bit loud. I'm a bit loud. I was going, no, you're not. I said, no, you're not. I'm a bit loud. And she go, and Shrek goes to the guy, can you turn him up? And the sound guy yelled out, he's loud enough as it is. 
<laughs> and I was, I was five more, mate, on the way back, and I was rattling the glasses in the, in the bar. Every time and I went down, going, turn them up, turn them up. <laughs> so embarrassing, so embarrassing. Oh, it's so funny. It's oh, so wow. Funny. Um, yeah. So what about a uh, what about an embarrassing story with uh, with about L. A. Thompson? There's lots. <laughs> Where do I start? Where do I start? Um, hey Chris, remember? remember. <laughs> there's so, there's so, there's, there's so oh, many. Okay. Oh, while you while you're thinking about that, I have a message here from Phil. Uh, Sex beard, the name, okay. came to us yes. while we were drinking beers, and we were thinking oh. about funny words. When we came across the word Merkins, then played <laughs> on the words and came up with sex beard. <laughs> Merkins. Is... <laughs> I think right. I know what it is. Excellent. All Excellent. right. So, what do you call that? Um, is it an antonym? A different word means the same? Yeah, yeah I think so. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Or synonym. I don't know. <clears throat> I got some synonyms in one. the cupboard. That's one. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you got a funny story? Me? Um, yeah. There's so many. I've had I've had um, Shirley try and sell my body on stage at gigs and stuff like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, like I've been. I could have I could have made some really good money on that merchandise. I tell you, oh, I was right. going to pump it off, out. Offered up in front of a. Of wasn't a crowd happening. Crowd. Wasn't having it. Um, <laughs> Uh, we've, we've turned up, in fact, um, one of the things that keeps coming to my mind is when Shereen and I, we used to play quite a few corporate gigs, do a little acoustic thing, and we turned up and we auditioned for this um, centre, which was called the Thano Centre, I think, oh, in the true. West Auckland. That's and, true. Um, this, 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 and no this, sound. Yeah, this place was um, brand spanking <laughs> new, and they kind of serviced the Māori community with, with looking after um, people struggling maybe in, in society. So... They've got this big venue and this big sort of almost like a hospital and they had all this all these supplies and different things for helping you know impoverished out and stuff like that and when Shri and i got there um they had all this brand new sound gear and boxes which they must use for shows and stuff like that and Shri and i just helped ourselves we were, we were the first people to use all this brand new pa um all this gear and microphones and thousands of dollars of microphones and stuff and we just ripped into these boxes that weren't for us and we set up and used them and um it was, it was a great great but we in. didn't really know we didn't know it wasn't for us we just assumed that it was there yeah ripped the boxes <laughs> open probably paying a hundred grand for a gear <laughs> mixes and stuff but it looks like two acoustic guitars <laughs> oh right okay <laughs> so um oh dear yeah, there's, there's heaps there's heaps um, did we ever get invited back to that i i don't think we did <laughs> no, no, there's a few politicians no. here. I remember there's a few politicians. There's an opening. Well, That's well, right. Actually, uh, talk, talking about like politicians, it. LA, is that I saw on your website uh, you you met the uh, New Zealand Prime Minister, right? Yes, yeah, so I was um, both the New Zealand Prime Minister. I was cheeky enough at the Global Summit to ask for a selfie with Jacinda. And um, the bouncer was <laughs> bustling away saying, no, no, no. <laughs> And so was her sidekick. And then Jacinda heard me and she goes, no, I will. And I was I was stoked. So I had selfies with Jacinda. The week before that, I'd had selfies with um, Helen Clark because, <laughs> again, I'd had a couple of Pinot Gris in my defence. I hadn't been out for a while. And um, we were doing an auction for Helen Clark's book. And I kept putting my hand up because I wanted to outbid the, the woman who was um, – well, I wanted her to pay more for the book. I ended up paying over nine hundred dollars for a book signed by Helen Clark. So I made sure she gave me a selfie with that as well. <laughs> wow, that's amazing! But yeah, it was within a week of each other. It was um, a real privilege to um, be a part of the fundraising for Rainbow Youth, which is the Helen Clark book. So she was there doing her thing, and. Um, so I did my bit and donated inadvertently a little bit more than I'd anticipated, but it was <laughs> worth, it, worth it. Um, and yeah, Jacinda, she's yeah, she's amazing. So um, I was really appreciated that she put a. She said, "No, no, I'll, I'll have a selfie with her." And nobody else, everyone just looked at me as if I was an alien. You know, how dare you ask yeah. our prime minister for a selfie when you've just been at this music global summit? You know, but I yeah. thought, well. You know, this is a once in a lifetime thing, and I may never meet the woman again. So she was very gracious, very gracious. Oh, that wow, awesome. that's cool. Yeah. So and I'm going to so, frame it, I reckon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, awesome. That's amazing. It's amazing. So, uh, Chris, we, we met in California. Uh, 
How long ago now did we meet? 2017? No, I think it was 18. Oh, 18. 2018. It's nearly two years Was it the Steve Vai? Was that when you went to the New York? Was that the New York one? No, that was Palm Springs. Palm Springs. Palm Springs. Actually, um, funny story, when I went there, I went to catch the train and uh, from LA to Palm Springs because I looked it up online. And and the funny thing is in LA, the – the people who have no money and are not, I'm just, just don't actually, they only use public transport. So it's a different sure. thing. So I, I was using public, tra- I wanted to use public transport just to be economical. Yeah. And uh, anyway, I um, asked the guy at the station, can I please buy a ticket? And he goes, oh no, we, it's not running anymore. And I was like, oh, when did it stop running? Because it's still on your websites. And he goes, oh, when Trump got in. <laughs> so um, anyway, oh I had goodness. to. So I only just arrived in LA, so I had to within within the hour. I was behind the wheel of a Mustang um, driving on the wrong side of the road, and there was a like one. Of, I think that was the first time I drove in LA uh, wow. with eight lane highways, just yeah, out of control. Cool. And then That's driving, crazy, eh? Crazy driving, stuff. Uh, and I was driving through the toll roads, and I thought, oh yeah, it can't be that bad. It went beep. and it went fourteen ninety nine on the little. I thought, oh cool. Oh well, tourist. <laughs> I have to pay you know, $15 on the toll road. It wasn't just one toll. I went through about 10 tolls because they, wow. they beep like every so, so many miles. It's like, yeah, nearly what? $150 US one way in tolls. That was insane. Oh my yeah, gosh. but the, anyway, the, uh, what do you call those big wind, they have massive wind farms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I drove up those too. Yeah, I remember those. We must have the same right. trip. Yeah, we should have carpooled, mate. Should have said something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've got coffee. I've got really coffee. <laughs> you could have around assumed half the $150 bloody thing, hey? Yes. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, so, oh, sorry, mate. You go. Yeah, no, you go. You go. I was just saying, when, when I, I we did the same trip, obviously, and when I drove there, I was like, mm, this is easy, man. I'm American. I can drive. I'm, just, mm. you know, I'm, the, I'm the left side <laughs> of the road, and I'm really good at this and, and doing that. And then we left the, the um, Palm Springs Academy and came back and I was frazzled at getting back to the airport. It was, like, it was so busy and there's so yeah. many turn-offs and I was so cocky when I got there and when I got back, I was like, this was from the airport going, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was so frazzled. Yeah. So I thought I had yeah, to stop. Yeah, yeah. The Americans drive hey, fast, um, just, just, Just what I remember, if, if it's okay, I remember, um, Doug, you were saying that you, or Chris, you mentioned about gigs you know, because um, we were talking about marketing before. Yeah, and yeah. We, were oh, we should probably get back on track. Promotions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was going to just say, um, I was just going to suggest if you, you know, um, as Chris knows, um, I've been pretty, quite influential or quite <coughs> proactive, if you like, in changing the attitudes of venues and yes. paying artists for performing. So, of course, um, I've Big pushed show. for fair, fair play, you know. And um, as a result, um, there's been some good good things going on with the, the people that I've – I've never been really a booking agent, but venues would ring me and say, hey, look, we see all these people on, on your website. Do they, do they do covers work? And I know you're a covers artist. You know, can you get us a blues band or can you do this or can you do that? Or we want Friday yeah. and Saturday nights, you know, for two months. Can you please do the bookings? Absolutely. So they'd pay me to do that. And um, – I'd make sure every single artist you get a deposit. Treat yourself like a business. You know, if you okay, if if you, everyone's going to undercut themselves, do cashies. You know, we've all done the cashies. But if you're going to undercut each other to get the job, just so that you get lots of work, um, in the long term, you do the industry and yourselves a disservice because you're not getting paid what you're worth. Um, and I just see it happening still. It's still happening today, but. I must admit the RSAs, the RS, I think you got RSLs in Australia. Yeah, RSLs. Is it RSL? Yeah, um, they're really good. Like, I'll, I'll I'll ring and say, look, can you um, tell me not not exactly what others are asking, so that we at least get a fair shot at, at not um, overcharging or not undercharging. And yeah. they're really upfront and they let us know that this is what we'll pay a soloist. This is you know. So I like to get that information, and. Um, I had a case not so long ago before COVID-19 where my regular gig at the local, which I love playing at this gorgeous little um, restaurant bar down at Waihee Beach, and I go in there once a month and I only play 
for a couple of hours. I just love it. I can do covers or I can do originals and do whatever. No backing tracks, backing, you know, whatever you feel like doing. Anyway, one of the young women, I don't know if you remember her, Chris, when you were playing in Tauranga with me one time for LMM, Kara from Canada was there playing for us. And um, he offered her an X amount. And I said, have they given you a meal for this and found your accommodation? She said, no. I said, where did you travel from? Oh, I've just driven five hours. I said, you what? And you're getting that. Excuse me. Hey, um, can we get a meal, please, and a couple of drinks? And can she have a half hour to sit down and rest? <laughs> so yeah, I, helped wow. her set, I helped her set up and I played for a little bit for her just to give her that break. And then she did a full couple of hours. And they didn't pay her what she was worth, but at least she got a nice meal and a sit down rest. And um, I said to her, why don't you? Just give me a call if, you, if you're going on tour, you know, and, and if I know the venue, I'll, I'll negotiate for you. So I don't like yeah, to well. be a booking agent, but I definitely like to see venues and artists meet each other halfway. If you're new and you don't have a following, are you at least prepared to rent a crowd kind of thing? Like invite all your friends and family and, you know, and that's how I started. I just started out at the King's Arms and downtown Auckland, little places, just invite you know playing at three in the morning i'd be playing at a 24-hour cafe you know <clears throat> or on the streets of auckland I was, I was making more and busking money at three in the morning than i did at my gig you know mm. so it's about being present being accessible to your public um mm. having someone negotiate for you is a really good idea because then you're not having to be, be good guy bad guy you're not it's a bit like having someone who does the invoicing and the sales and someone who's does the debt collecting, you can't be both. Yeah. So if you're, a, if you're a performing artist, you're better off paying someone 50 bucks a, a gig or whatever, you know, out of your, or 20% commission or something for doing your bookings or right. having a promotions manager who does that for you or a manager or something, you know? Yeah. So I think that's, you know, for gig-wise, having someone go to bat for you is, is professional. And yeah. um, it, in the long term, you actually earn better and more consistently and having right. a package you know having a, having a template of posters and where you're going to advertise you know have a list of things that you're going to do every single time so that people know where to find you yeah and i think uh with chris like how did um what's the best things that you have worked out with la about yeah moving forward marketing and getting on with the job making um, sure maybe you're actually rewarded financially correctly well, it's sort of, yeah, I actually lean on on LA quite a bit. She does she does a lot of the money, so <laughs> she pays me. But what what yeah, I I think I think one of the you've got to have a good rapport with people. Right? You've got to have a good rapport, and yeah, show 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 a lot of gratitude when you when you when you are working these places, and and you are kind of like a visitor. That's why I find you're quite a visitor. So you you're sort of on your best behaviour, and they'll ask you back again. So. Um, that's what I've learned. And playing quite a few different venues, you come back to those places um, because you've been courteous to them, and you looked up, you know, and you haven't you haven't been obnoxious or been demanding. Or so I find that's helped. Um, what blows me away about um, LA Thompson is just how many people she knows. You know, so many people. So you know, I often just rock up to these gigs, and you know, it's a new place, and I'm ready to go. And you know, that's been quite easy for me. So you, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure Chris, you, I mean, Chris is a joy to work with, you know, I mean, sure, we, 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 I'd love it if we could be working together more and, or even rehearsing together, <clears throat> but I can, I can say to Chris, look, I've got this gig on, these are the songs, he'll know half of them and the rest he'll cram in and, and, and learn, he, 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 he <laughs> can, <laughs> and, um, you know, I've, I've really appreciated his ability to, to think on his feet and do that. Um, both of us, I think, not to speak for you, Chris, but my passion is original music. And if in, an, in a perfect world, Me too. Me too. I would have, I would have, yeah, absolutely. And I would have continued. I, I was stubborn. I'd go to a covers gig and play all my own songs. And I still do to this day. I, I get good payouts from APRA because I play all my own songs at every single gig, no matter, even if they say, oh, we only want covers. Okay, so I'll throw, I'll throw my backing track, which is produced at the, you know, fully as a professional backing track, or I'll get the band to yep. play. And we play my song, and nobody knew that I wrote that song. Not right. unless I tell them. And that's what I tell artists to do now. I say, look, 
you're better off for a while until people get to know who you are and until you get a following at your gigs or on the Spotify, whatever. <clears throat> Not so much Spotify, sorry, on live gigs. You don't have to tell them that you wrote those songs. Just slip them in there. Just a bit like having a Spotify playlist with all the big names and you've just slipped your song in there. And that that's the thing. You Until you're known, until you've got those super fans, now those yeah. super fans want you. I go to a gig now and I say to them, what do you want to hear today? Would you like me to do another cover or would you like to hear one of mine? Nine times out of ten they want to hear my song. Now that's that's a huge, you know, like I never would have got that 20 years ago. Right. You know? and, and like Chris was saying, you, when people see you enjoy, even if it's not their genre of music, I've noticed, I'll go play at a pub that plays rock, right? And I'll come yeah. in there with my country pop and do a little bit of rock, but mostly my, my you know, my, my little bit of pop and a little bit of this. And they say, oh, can you do Wagon Wheel? And I go, no, you've got 10 bands to do Wagon Wheel. I'm <laughs> going to sing you, I'm going to sing you Dreams by the Cause, you know, and off I go. <laughs> And um, I said, I'm a chick. I'm going to sing you something from Blondie or Stevie Nicks or, you know, um, Chrissy Hines or something, you know. So they, they see me enjoying myself. They see Chris and I enjoying ourselves. They see the chemistry. They feel it and they're into it. And they don't care what it is. They get up and dance, you know. Right. They sing along. And nine times out of ten, they realize they actually really like this, even though it's different from the last ten bands that they had, which was classic rock. And, look, I love classic rock. You know, I love Neil Young. I love um, heavy metal. I like some of Red Hot Chili Peppers. I like, you know, um, Sting, bon, bon Jovi and Steve, the whole works. But if you're going to ask me what songs I write, what I can, what I feel suits my voice or my, my personality or whatever, it's probably going to be more like Keith Urban, you know, somebody like you or Chrissy Hines or Sheryl Crow or Stephen, Stephen Nicks, you know? Right. So not everybody, you know, they think they want to hear all this and then you give them something new, you win them over because you're enjoying yourself. And within half an hour, yep. you've, you've got them, you know. And that's the key, like Chris was saying. You're not just grateful to – because you're enjoying yourself. People, right. people get, a, get a buzz. You know that as a performer yourself. They get a buzz right. off your buzz. But if you yep. go in there and you're like, I'm too cool for this, you know, this is below me or something like that. If you've got an attitude like yep. that, you, you, you might as well walk out the door now, you know, because yep. you're, not, you're, not you're not going to win anybody over. You're not going to make friends. Um, yep. It doesn't matter how good you are. You could be top, you know, top. I, I played with a guy once. I couldn't believe this. At a little bar called The Temple. I don't know if Chris remembers a little bar called The Temple up at the top of Queen Street in Auckland. Yeah, yeah, was one of my yeah, fav no. favorite. You remember? Yeah, I used to play there regularly along with Java Drive and the Glue Pot. I remember this guy. I gave him a oh, break. There you go. There you go. Oh That's God, for you. I've got. I'm going to have to plug you in. It I've says uh, success little... only comes from doing the hard yards. You've got it. I'm just going to walk you over to my charge that up to 100. And... Now it's saying that it's got a low battery, so I'm just going to plug okay, you in. Okay, that's cool. Am I my I was, folks? <laughs> I will just. Uh, I will just. Um, just read it out for you. It says success only comes from doing the hard yards. That's from Raymond. Yeah. So. You got it. <clears throat> yes. Can you still hear me? Because I'm probably a bit distorted now. Yeah. Uh, it probably sounded better over where you were before. No, just kidding. Just kidding. Cheeky bloody Aussie. Uh, I used to work at a help help desk, and if they were annoying, uh, I say I need your computer serial number. And they say, okay, cool. Where is it? And I said, it's at the back of your tower. So I'd make him get under the desk and go and read out the serial number. And they come back to me and they read it out. And I said, no, you've read the wrong serial number. And they went, you're kidding. So they went go back under the desk again. <laughs> that okay. was IT humor. Uh, but anyway, um, what were we talking about? You were saying something, uh, L.A. Thompson, about you were the yeah, little temple. Um, the temple bar. This, this guy got up. I couldn't believe it. He got up and he turned his back to the audience and he played. He turned oh. his back to the audience, right? Uh. And, he, and he played to them. Um, but I must admit, we, I, I salvaged the evening by the power went out and they lit candles and I got to walk around the whole room and sing acoustically to everybody. And I must admit, that was probably one of the loveliest things I've ever done. 
Oh wow, that's brilliant. That's yeah. good. Yeah. That's so um, we're love- we're probably we're nearly pushing uh, ninety minutes. So maybe oh. the last quest- question oh, yeah. is, uh, or maybe Chris, if you want to add um, some some ideas about being an original artist that you've employed since um, working with LA Thompson about how to maybe even some advice for, you know, young up and coming people who's watching right now. Jeez. Um, I think just when I play on my own, do my own thing, uh, it's a bit different. I'm, I might put one cover I've in. Lost your sound. I've lost your sound. You okay. Me? Yeah, we're good. Um, so yeah, when I play my own stuff, it's a little bit different, but, um, when I'm playing as a duo or in a band, I think it's you've got to give a mixture of you know um, covers and um, originals um, because it, you, you've got to cater for the audience. So people want to hear um, you know some some stuff they know. So and you learn that stuff very well, and you look like you're enjoying it, and the, you know the audience gets um, sucked into that. I've, I've, we've played some really cool stuff which I've enjoyed, um, and I've played a lot of female orientated. Um, songs with, with a female singer, and it's not stuff I normally listen to, but um, playing that uh, live and looking like you're enjoying it, and, and I am enjoying it, and giving and putting your own little spin on it is is, is a real good thing. You got you got to put your um, you know got to put your whole self out there. I think the audience can actually you know can, they can tell when you're faking that you're not really enjoying yourself. Put your um, signature on it. Yeah, yeah, you got to get stuck in. I was just um, I was thinking of Shirley. I've Sometimes... lost Chris's sound completely. Okay, no problem. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> it's like we're playing live. That's what you say. I can't hear Chris. Um, uh, so yeah, yeah, she, yeah, she's walking oh, around she's the coming. house. All right. I'll wait till she settles down, and uh, then we'll bring you back in. Just when you settle, uh, just wave at me, and I'll bring you back in. <laughs> What's okay. real funny on when you're playing? Um... Oh, we got a little push in here. There she is. Uh, it says here, uh, have sax, bit. have seen sax players do a full set with their back turned, added to the mystery for sure, but confused me. Is this a thing for musos to do for a reason? Well, absolutely not, never. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, uh, I know Rage Against the Machine; they do some uh, <clears throat> kind of cool things, you know, pushing the envelope. But you know, each to their absolutely. own. Absolutely. Yeah, but I think if you're starting out, when you already have a name, when you've already have a brand, you that can play with it. That was what I was it. about to say. If you've got mm. a brand, yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah. You, you can mm. sort of play with the idea to stay current, but I think, yeah, growing the brand, you definitely have to engage. But I, I like what you were saying there, Chris, about when you are an original artist starting out, you do have to engage the audience from wherever they, they are. Yeah, yeah. And I find that mm. doing most some of the artists I've worked with or even doing my own thing, you actually work harder on the break because if you go and actually talk to the people face to face and engage, then you actually have like, then there's a personal connection with the next set, you know? So they will, absolutely. They will, they stay. And they like it. They like it. Mm. Uh, There we go. Sorry. No, no. It says audio must be part of the show. Not just, not just a jam session. Yeah. yeah. What were you going to say, Chris? I was just going to say, this is what I appreciate about you. Um, Doug, is you, you can't sort of go half ass it. You've got to you've got to go all out. You know, you've got to you've got to give it. I, I may do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah me too. You've got, yeah, you've got, <laughs> no, it's, it's, you've got to do that because if you if you, if you look confident and then you're selling it to the audience better when you're confident, if you're yeah. sort of going, mm, not what. Um, and I've had moments where I'm going to go, oh, geez, I'm just going to go for it. You know, but, you know that moment you go, I'm going for it. And normally, yeah. most of the time, it pays off because um, you. you you sure you yourself. You sure yourself. You look confident, and I reckon that helps mm. suck the audience. And, and even sometimes when you make mistakes, they don't know because you're you're, you're so into it, and you look like you got your foot up, and you're going like this, and you're really <laughs> really it. And sometimes being wireless is quite a good thing. I used to be wireless quite a bit, and yeah, actually yeah. get off the stage and walk around the audience. Sometimes if I could and get and and so try and get the audience. Well, I don't, I don't go wireless anymore because I, I had trouble with it. But I thought had been wireless. I even went onto the street one time. We went out a little club onto the street and walked down the street and trying to get people to come into the into the venue. But yeah, that I remember that. So, I remember that. So, 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 so takes the pressure uh, off me as the lead singer. It takes the pressure off me when Chris takes off and does his oh. thing. It's like, yeah, go. Just you know. I actually straight. got a um, my last live stream. <laughs> I got a blister. I was using my tongue on the guitar, and uh, so Raymond, yeah, it's getting there, man. 
I had to put a Band-Aid on it, but I spat it out. But, um, yeah, my last live stream, I was standing. I got a little bit into it. I was standing on my amplifier playing behind my head uh-huh. and then live streaming. And, and then someone said, I play with you. Can you play guitar with your toe? So I did that. First time I've ever done oh, that. Nice. Yeah. Good. Yeah, true, true story, yes. That, that's so because I do all the upside down risk. stuff and I do the elbow thing. So was that right or left foot? Uh, I use my right foot, I think. Uh-huh. I, I don't know. No, left foot. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying if you're ambidextrous. I'm just saying if you're ambidextrous or not. Hey? Oh, sorry? Did you take your shoe off, Did you take your shoe off Doug? No, no, I, I kept my shoe on. <laughs> mm. Yes. <laughs> It's the That's first amazing. time, first time for everything. Yeah, there is. Uh, yeah, because I, mean, <laughs> I think I've cho- I've shown you that guitar I've got with a neck going each way, right? Yeah, uh, I saw it on a few chaps. The um, uh, got from this one here. Some of it. It is it. Michael, very uh, Michael Berrio. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, That's yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. It's well, I hope I hope um, sometime in the future, <laughs> I'd love to show you the other um, new ladies and guitars in the future if you're interested. Yeah, We're yeah, yeah, to totally. Touch. What, we have to yeah, yeah, touch. totally. Doug, um, there's a there's a bunch of things you've been saying that I'm really really interested. I'm coming back to Australia, and yeah, um, right, cool. I still want to come on tour and stuff. So, um, yeah, yeah, cool. Chris, 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 I've invited Chris on a special project that will probably take us about a year to put together. And I um, talking about bucket lists, you know, and little girl dream stuff, doing guitars and what have you. I've wanted to pin the tracks for a concert or a show, so. I want. Um, I've talked to um, a concert pianist who will bring in a double bass flute and what have you. With mm. my drummer and Chris, we can make up that um, elusive orchestra, mini orchestra that I've wanted for the concert. So yeah, right. 21 original tracks for the concert. So that's something I'd like to do in New Zealand before I, you know, before I kind of come and bring it overseas. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Just, I just think so that's I can great. Tick that off. You know, just tick that off the list as a as a well, I, wanted to I'm do a it, fan. And then do it. You know. Um, oh, we, got the, we can't wait to see you. <laughs> well, I, I'm a fan of doing concept records, and this is my uh, concept record. May as well oh, do a free plug. So uh, it's called Post Traumatic Express. It's um, it's yeah, this yeah. is the uh, summation. I, I know Chris already knows about this one, but uh, mm, cool. this is summation of the five stages of grief. I went to university, and this is two years yes. worth of work. This is my well, honors in composition. So, congratulations. Uh, in short, thank you. So I lost my uh, sister. There's a photo of her. Uh, oh, my finger's right on her. There you go. So uh, back in the day, uh, wow. we were going to be the next Killing Heidi brother and sister duo. Wow. Wow. Um, wow. We got signed and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, when you're young, it's like, oh, man, I'm going to be a rock star. And then it all came crashing down. So um, yeah. anyway, this is to just stimulate uh, healthy conversation about grief. Yes. I'm not yes. saying I know everything and everyone's experience is completely different, but it doesn't matter if you've had lost someone or you lost your job, lost your house. If something significantly changes, you go through different stages of your life. Absolutely. And, and the first one's denial. No, it's, I'm all right, mate. No, it's all good. So anyway, I actually, I'm a, um, a speaker as well. I have I never said this on this platform before. I go and do, go and tell my story. Like technically, is it called motivational speaking? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. But I, I, go, and, I go and mm. speak for uh, men's health. And because men, men are really That's useless great. at uh, divulging ah. deep stuff, dark clouds. Uh-huh. So um, anyway, that's just my two cents. So I'm an advocate now, for that. Mm. I'm Very glad cool. you brought Very that cool. up because I'm glad you brought that up because um, I'm an advocate for um, education and healthy mental health. Um, PTSD and, and depression and narcissism is, is a big thing. Um, that's true, Raymond. And yep. so, you know... Um, Everything from cancer to MS and PTSD, uh, mental health issues, um, I put a bit aside for, for, for whatever good that, that, you know, the charities. Um, and I, I wrote a song, not, not like you've done with the, the, the album, but I, my nana lived to 102. And about mm. five, days, five days before she died, I wrote her a song. But because she'd been my mother for many years as well, a mother figure, um, it's a, I call it Nana's song, but it's a song for all mums. And, um, yeah, yeah right. it's not, not as sad as you think it would be. It's, it's, um, you are my mother, you're my friend, you know? So it's, it's, a, it's got a, 
a happy beat to it, if you like, even though right. the words are quite serious. Do you, I don't know, Chris, do you find sometimes you'll write um, words to instrumental or other way around, depending on which comes first, and sometimes the actual lyrics might have a way deeper meaning to the sound of the music. Um, yeah. Without a Sound is probably one of the most popular songs I wrote from the 80s. And I tell you, the kids sing and dance to it. Go figure. It's got one of the, the heaviest meanings of any of the songs I've ever written in my life. And yet they hear something or feel something in it and they love it. And they just, they always want me to play that one. So I, I, I had to sort of revisit that one and um, go, wow. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I get it, I think. <laughs> but it wouldn't yeah. have been my first choice for, for kids to, to want to sing, you know. Mm. I think it's Headspace. What do you think, Chris, about when you're writing instrumental stuff? Um, you mean just the instrumental stuff, or yeah, yeah, just original, well? yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, um, well, this, this latest, latest track I've written is definitely about um, spirituality and discovery, and it's called synchronicity, and it's about how events happen to me that have sort of events have happened, and I think I can see the journey how it's been, and everything's been you know in a synchronous sort of state. Um, and that's, that's, that's instrumental. And then I've got other songs which, uh, you know, I've talked about my own journey with, with um, my own health and different things and oh, so the you're lyrics. Le you're a leukemia survivor, right? I think it's, yeah, yeah. I think it's quite cool to have um, lyrics that uh, have more than one interpretation. Like um, one of my Agreed. tracks called I Won't Fade could be about, you know, seeking approval. It could be beating... Um, a disease, it could be facing a challenge, it could be um, the, um, about depression. There's, there's often more than one meaning, and so everyone can take their own thing from that That's song. That's right, and they do, and they do. People yeah. do. Music moves people in ways that, you know, it's like it's been proved. Ten people can be in the same room. Yeah, true. What is it? Ten people can be in the yeah. Yes. Ten people can be in the same room, experience something, and have a different story from that same experience well songs are same um when you see someone with a tear in their eye from something or it, it brings them joy or and, and that's what music does you know it's sound mm. once upon a time we didn't have words we had sound so mm. sound you know you guys um in particular look, I'm, I'm a reasonably good guitarist but i would never call myself a, a lead you know or shred um i'm mostly self-taught even though i know you know but i hold my own and i'm happy with that I always wanted mm. to aspire to be. I don't have a pinky that works well, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't. I don't have a pinky that does as, as it's told. So um, I'm relying on my three fingers. So I'm, I used to be the girl standing in the corner. Just I just watched the lead guitarist. I used to I go guess... to clubs and bar, bars, and that's what I did all, all the time. Just stand there and watch, and sit and watch, glued to the lead guitarist. You yeah. should probably be by yourself a wireless system because being, you know, a national runner. For New Zealand, <laughs> representing New Zealand in yeah. running, you could run around and like no one would catch you, you know. Yeah, but um, anyway, on that note, um, maybe stay on the line. But is there any? Oh, here we got we got another comment here. Uh, my now seventeen year old son attempted the worst. At Eleven. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad to hear you all promoting mental health awareness. Thank you for sharing your journey. Open Excellent. Honest. Thank you, Veronica. That's good. She's the art lover. Thank so you. But, well, thank um, you, Veronica. Matt, Maybe is there uh, some uh, last closing words? Yes, please, if I may, and also oh, that's Chris. Next. That's enough. This... All right, Nick. No, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you. You've been talking to him, but when I haven't been around, have you? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, going back to indie artists, promotional, www.localmusicians.co.nz. It's still going strong. At any given time, there's 12 artists plus. Your artist profile is on there. Have a chat. There might be something there worthwhile for you. Um, message me or, or, or chat to Doug about contacting me if you're interested. Because this is an international platform, not just for New Zealanders, even though it's been yeah. focused on New Zealand. Um, the other one is, if I may, um, www.lathompson.co.nz. Come, yeah, come and visit me and um, join my mailing list if you want to. I, in fact, I haven't even sent a mailing out for ages. Um, but <laughs> One job. One all job. My, yeah, yeah. You could probably also. deliver it if you run quick enough. Oh, yeah, the hand, hand no, delivery is so. middle, middle to long distance would take a lot longer. No, sh no sprints. Um, okay. So all the links are on top. I'm about to 
upload a bunch of stuff onto iTunes, Spotify. At the moment, they're on Bandcamp. Okay. And um, only a, a few songs on iTunes and Spotify. But, yeah, come say hi. And yeah, I've yeah. got a really low battery, guys, so I'm about to lose you. Okay, cool. Well, and any closing words, Chris? Um, I'm just going to rip off Steve Boy <laughs> because uh, he, <laughs> he says it all. Eh? He says, you know, stay true to yourself. St- you know, stay on course. Don't listen to what other people say. And, um, and I break those rules all the time. Yeah. So true, Raymond. Light comes on. Yeah. So true. So true. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, just keep going. Believe yeah, just yeah, r- ripping him off. He, he's like a guru, isn't he? So, I mean, he yeah. says, "Stay your course. Um, don't listen to what everyone else says. Um, stick to your stick to your vision." And that's what he did, and it worked out for him. So that's what I'm sticking to anyway. <laughs> so I'm just copping <laughs> in. <laughs> Very good. Well, please uh, stay on the line and wave, and uh, I'll close it out. There we go. Awesome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you both for. for because I know it's getting late in New Zealand and, uh, you know, there's a time difference situation. But, uh, yeah, but anyway, I'll just put you from the feed for a second. Thank you. Thanks. And so please like and subscribe. Both of them also connect on Facebook. Actually, like my page. You know what? I spent all this time doing these banners and I hardly ever use them. I need to practice multitasking. Make some noise. It's my TV show. Make some noise. So if anyone else out there has an awesome project you're doing, and you want some noise to be made about it, please tell me, message me, please like this music page and contact me and we'll do a show. And there we go, YouTube. I need some subscribers, I need a thousand. I think I'm like a few hundred in, but anyway. Uh, Please like and subscribe, I really appreciate that. I need your help. Thank you, thank you for your time and effort. I'll see you again soon.